I'm Catherine Riley, and I'm here at Upholstery on Broadway, and I'm here to introduce a video that is called How to Make a Malian Mudcloth Ottoman. And Kevin is going to actually tell you about how to upholster this, but I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about the fabric. I'm going to tell you where it's made, how it's made, who makes it, and why it's important to support the artists who make this unusual textile. First of all, what is mud cloth? Well, in the Bamana language, it's called bogolan. So bogo means mud and lan means of. So of mud. And it has been made for centuries far away in West Africa, in Mali, in a city called Jene. Well, you probably haven't heard of Jene, but I'm sure you've heard of its sister city, Timbuktu. Well, both of these cities are UNESCO ancient um, cultural heritage cities, so thousands of tourists used to come to these, uh, visit them every year, mostly from Europe, where there were direct flights. They would come and they would see the beautiful, um, best example in the world of Sudanese architecture. They would come and see that mosque, and they would support the local economy by buying mud cloth. And now that this has become a, a violent, dangerous region, all kinds of terrorists have come in from Libya, and there's a big danger of uh, being kidnapped or being killed. So now there are no tourists at all. So the result is the artists who used to make this fabric have become increasingly impoverished, and there's an increase in childhood nutrition as a result, the women who make the Bogolan say that they don't even have enough money to buy cereal for their children. So we, Rubia, we are a nonprofit based in Lexington, and we've decided to support these artists by buying their beautiful fabric and selling it here. And so why is Bogolan mud cloth so special? Well, it's been made for hundreds of years, and it's actually made out of mud, and the Malians say that you couldn't make this fabric any other place in the world because their soil is very special. And what they do is the, they dye the fabric in mud, but first they soak it in a very special Malian tree, um, the Ngalama tree, and they soak it in a liquid made from the bark, and that is like, it's a tannin, and it makes the mud dye stick. So they do several uh, um, dyes and then they dry it in the sun and they use um, either a stick or a toothbrush to make these special designs. So one of the unusual things about this fabric is it's actually a language. It's a silent language that women created centuries ago to communicate with one another. And each symbol of the fabric means something, and then the whole cloth tells a story. And these symbols are representative of moral codes, or what do you do in life, what, what are the rights and wrongs in life, and proverbs. Let me give you an example. This is one of my favorite symbols. This is a, here a crisscross of two paths. And it represents two people meeting, and it symbolizes the importance of being open to others and being empathic to other people. And that's a value you see in, I've seen a lot in West Africa over my 25 years of working there. People are very kind and, and generous and really, it's really amazing. So one other symbol is the cowrie shell, which is, you see, these are the two halves of a cowrie shell. And this, represents Malian sovereignty from the French, or their independence. So the French colonized Mali um, in the late 1800s, and at that time, cowrie shells were used as currency. That was their money. And the French wanted them to use French francs, en français, and so to resist the French, they said, no, we want to use our cowrie shells. So this has become a symbol of both wealth and um, of uh, sort of a Malian independence from the French. So as the, there are less tourists and less people come to Mali, 
there's a danger that this language, this language of Bogolong, will be lost. So this is really an endangered cloth. And what is so meaningful about it is it has become the symbol not only of Malian culture, but of African culture. And we at Rubia are so grateful to Kevin Kennedy of Upholstery on Broadway for really supporting our cause and reaching out uh, like the symbol um, and being open to the uh, struggles of others, in this case of the Malians in West Africa, and volunteering his time to make this beautiful uh, Malian upholstered ottoman. And so without further ado, Kevin is going to show you actually how you can make this yourself. Okay, so we're doing the mud cloth project and um, this is a kind of a neat stool. It's a store-bought stool and I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by how they did this. Um, they, they put a zipper on the cambric and I think mainly the reason they did it was so that you can unzip, I know that you can unzip the cambric and then undo the legs. But I think the main reason was for shipping. And I think it's an ingenious idea. I've never seen this. Look at this. So if you're going to be doing these at home, you unzip it first. Cool, huh? And inside they give you the, the legs. If you were getting this package to you, the legs would be all in here. And then you'd, you'd be putting the legs on if you were going to use this fabric, if you weren't going to be reupholstering. But we're reupholstering. So we're going to take all the legs off. They give you the Allen wrench. And then two screws on each leg, you undo the screws, which I've already done, for the sake of speed. And the legs come right out. Put these down here for now. Okay, I just want to show you, because if this is brand new, this is going to provide a good base for our mud cloth. Our mud cloth is a very loose, loose woven material, so I would rather not anyhow just go over batting. So I think this provides a really good base for our loose weave on the mud cloth. So I'm going to go right over that. Now we don't always do that in upholstery. Most of the time we take an old cover off. This isn't an old cover. So it's almost you could consider this like a muslin cover. Okay, so what I've done is with the mud cloth, I picked out one of the, the motif that I liked. And, and this is a preference, really. And what I did was, um, what I do is, that's not the right one. Let's grab the right one. That's an extra piece. So what, what I do is I pick this one, this motif out, okay? So what I'm going to do first, okay, and I did want to mention that what I do is I overcut this three inches. I picked my center point, I measured to where it's going to be tacked, both lengthwise and widthwise, and I added three inches overall, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it on top, fabric on top, the beautiful mud cloth, and on the top I'm just going to take some measurements to get the center points. That's, that's 22, which means that this is the exact center of the fabric right here. So 11 and 18 and 9, it just has to come this way. When you adjust it from this point on, you're just adjusting it like so. You're rolling the fabric. Okay, we got it right in the exact center, okay? So what I want to do now is I want to pin tack, and I'll explain what that is in a minute. I want to pin tack the fabric down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over. And I am going to pin tack is a tack that's halfway in, okay? And um, it, it's a tack where you know that it's not a permanent tack, usually. So we're just going to, going to put it in about halfway. I'm going to put three in this side. One, two, and three. And on this side, we're going to pull it a little bit. And one in the middle, and then two off to either side. Notice how I have a magnetic tack hammer that makes it easy to pick the, the tacks up one at a time. And it's on the magnet, and if you don't have a magnetic tack hammer, you'd be just thumbing these tacks in, okay? So now what I'm going to do, we'll close this up so it's not in our way, okay? I'm going to take this, fold this up, we'll pull it up, not fold it, and we're going to get three more tacks, one in the middle, and a couple off to the side. And now we're going to take a couple of tacks this way, three tacks this way. These are six ounce tacks, upholsterer's tacks. One, two, and three. 
I'm going to take a look at this to see. You know, I have to say that the mud cloth really goes on nicely. Um, it, it usually, this is almost doesn't need to be stretched, but you see how it, we go like this and it's just a little pinch like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it this way. I'm going to undo this tack. And I'm going to give it a more of a stretch. I'm going to try to stretch it a little bit more. Just a little bit more. And I'm going to get another tack there. I'm going to undo this tack. And I'm going to stretch it a little bit more. And I'm going to come opposite. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to take this tack out. And I'm going to pull it. Take this out, pull it a little bit more. So you're pulling it in this particular fabric, all fabric is different, I'm pulling it about half of an inch. Okay, then I'm going to repeat down here. Pull it. Take another one here. Pull it. Down here. Stretch that. Stretch this. Now let's take a look at it. That's pretty good. I just noticed uh, I just did a little stretch that way. Now it's pulled the way I want it. It's tight and it's scented. Beautiful. Now we're going to work our, our pleats. So when you when you have a rounded, a rounded stool, and a drop like this, um, what what you're going to have is a V pleat. Okay, so to, in order to start a V-pleat, what you want to do is you want to stretch in the middle and your, your leg tells you where the middle of the curve is, your leg hole. So what you're going to do is you're going to stretch up and you're going to get a tack in there. Pin tack, right? Then what you want to do is you want to get an even pleat on each side. So sometimes what I do is I cut these pleats out, but on this mud cloth, I don't want you cutting it. When you cut the mud cloth, it really frays. So we're going to try to do this without cutting the mud cloth. Okay, so we have our, our tack, center tack, and we're going to put a pleat to, just to the left of the tack over here. And we're going to get a pin tack in there. Sometimes they don't want to go. Now you have a double, you're doubling up on the fabric, so it's a little harder to pin. So on this one here, I want to, I want to do the same thing. I want to, I want to pleat, but look what I'm doing. I'm trying to measure it up. I'm using my eye to try to get an even V pleat. Okay. I want them both the same size, same length, and the same angle. I like, I really like that. This fabric is almost, it's so beautiful. It's almost just falling right where I want it to fall, which is really good. I'm just going to get another pin tack in there to hold that. Okay. Yeah, look at that. We got a nice... I'm going to do that on all of them. Let's see if I can do that for the camera this time. So we, we line up our, our, our leg, our center point. We try to pull that down with an even amount of fabric on each side. See? Even amount of fabric on each side, and that gets a tack. Pin tack. And then what we're trying to do here is we get the first one almost to the almost to the tack. Not all not exactly. You don't want to be over the tack. You want it to pleat over the tack. Just like that. And then over here. At the same time, you see I'm smoothing the rest of this out. See that? Wow, this is amazing. I'll tell you, a lot of fabrics fight you on this in this process, but this fabric's not fighting. I think you're going to enjoy putting this on if you're going to be doing this at home. We hope that people will be able to do this and help the cause, as you've seen Kathleen in the introduction talk about. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm really happy with that. 
you can tell the, the people who make this, uh, Kathleen, that these, these uh, really it works out as a friendly, I would call it a very friendly um, stretch to it, a very friendly application. <laughs> so we thank them for that. I think it has a lot to do with where it comes from, and why it's made, how it's made, and all that. And, uh, a lot of good people. So we got that. So we're going to do our pleat here. This one's coming out a little short, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull that that way. I know instinctively that it was a little short at first. So you want them all, try to get them all the same length. we got a little slack here, right? So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you fold this. When you fold in the folding process, you're holding this and at the same time you're pulling this and at the same time you're getting a, a, a tight pleat, the same size, and the same distance here, the same length here, and with all this stretch, with all this uh, wrinkling gone, we're going to make up the difference. But watch, it's still a little wrinkled there, but I think we can get that out with a couple of pin tacks over here. And the nice thing about pin tack is you're not committed. You could take one out and go back and fix it, whatever you need to fix. So, you know, it's not like you're, you're, you're in trouble because you, you sank a tack all the way and you, you have trouble getting it out. Now look, I can get that out. Look at that. Take a look at that. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. Okay, so we got one more. One more to do. So we go to the middle here, we line it up, try to get, if you're finding that one pleat is bigger than the other, that means that you didn't do this part properly, that you didn't make sure you, you got enough slack, an even amount, as much as you can, an even amount of slack on both sides. And then you pull this down and then you get a tack there, pin tack. Beautiful. Got an even amount. Oh, I tell you, I love this fabric. Really beautiful. We got another pin tack there. We're going to take a look at this. I think I want to do at this point is um, I've got a, I've got it all pin tacked. I think I want to trim this up. Need a sharp pair of scissors for this because this fabric is really tight. I mean thick. So we're just going to trim up along here. I'm going to give ourselves about maybe an inch from the tack, so an inch and a half. That scissor's not doing too good. I've got another scissors. Jeez, when you get into a couple of layers here of uh, mud cloth, it really gets hard to cut it. So be careful when you're cutting this. do on this particular piece, I've got plenty of wood on the bottom here, what I, what I want to do is I want to fold this and tack it and be done with it because I really want to keep this zipped cambric. It's very important for shipping purposes too, if these are going to be shipped, to be able to have the option of putting our legs in there and shipping. But uh, normally in a, in a reupholstery project, the cambric comes off and you'd be tacking this all the way in and then you'd be putting another piece of cambric on, but we're trying to cut down the cost a little bit on this too by reusing this. And I like the idea of reusing <laughs> the reuse. I mean, that's what it's all about. I mean, there's no, uh, no point in putting a new piece of cambric or taking off that beautiful underlayer, especially since it provides a nice base for the mud cloth. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fold. I left myself enough to fold underneath. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack this all the way because I love it so much. Notice how if you have a magnetic tack hammer, you're picking up the tacks with the magnetic end, you're hitting it, and then you're turning your hand, your, your 
hammer over to the hammer end of your hammer. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go right along. I'm going to float right along here with these. I'm going to I'm going to uh, fold this. Now now we got a little bit of a problem here with our legs, so we need to we need to figure out what we're going to do. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to cut a little this way, like so. I'm just going to kind of fold that over like this. To to we need access for our leg. And then we're going to kind of go off this way with our pleat and get a couple of tacks in here. We can handle this bit down like so. And we can get a couple of tacks in there to hold that down. So that's pretty much done. And then these pin tacks that you had in there, they can be put all the way in if you're confident that um, you know um, that it's tight enough. And we are. We went through the tightening process. And here we go here with this one. I guess the hardest part is around the pleats here. You know, getting that, getting a tack in there like so. It's gonna look good with the leg in there. Watch this. You'll see that in a minute. that. Beautiful. You know, we could take our staple gun out here and, and staple this, but not everybody has a staple gun, right? If you did have a staple gun, you would be stapling. You would be doing the same thing I'm doing, pleating this over and just stapling instead of tacking. See this tack? That's our pin tack. We'll get that in there. We'll get that one in there. This is a wonderful way to sell the, the mud cloth, turn it into an ottoman. So here we go, we got the same problem here. So what we need to do is we open this up a little bit. Don't have to take any tacks out. And when we cut this out, just to give access for our leg, doesn't have to be perfect either. The, I would call the mud cloth a very forgiving cloth when it, when it comes to upholstering. We call it a forgiving fabric. Some fabrics like a silk, like a raw silk, a silk taffeta, are not so forgiving, right? You couldn't be doing this on a, on a silk taffeta, like the way I'm doing it. here that we cut around. Make sure, we need to make sure that this is folded, otherwise it's going to unravel on us. For all you home who don't have a magnetic hammer, you, you try to thumb these in and then hit it the rest of the way in. Mm -hmm. 
and um, there are big attacks that you can get, but I think the six ounce attacks are doing a fine job here. I don't think I don't think a big attack is necessary. So, so um, the other way, like I said, would be not folding it. If we weren't going to keep this for, for the purposes which I stated, um, this would have to come off, and you'd be stretching this and just and then and then tacking or stapling and then trimming it, not folding it, and then putting a piece of cambric folded over. So you you could still do that if you want, but I thought it was kind of, again I thought it was kind of neat to keep this and to keep the cost down. It takes more time to do that. So this one here, I think what I want to do is cut a little bit of this out on the back. We had a little bit too much on this side. Okay. too much fabric there. I'm going to cut this out too. And give that a little tuck. Flip it up, take a look at it. Oh, I like this side. I like this side. I like that side. So flip it up. Let's get our legs on. Let's undo the camera. I just think this is so neat. Um, pull it back. So you're going to put the legs in. Just for the sake of the video and for time, I'm going to put one in. These take two each, but for now I'm just going to put one in just to show you. And so use your Allen wrench that they give you. And make sure when you put them in, you can see you can see the the female end of the right in here. That goes to the that goes to the front. I mean the interior for your screw holes. Um, what I mean by that? So these are right at the surface. That's a way of telling. Put that in there. You would have those screws in. You zip it up, turn it over, take a look. Wow, and you got a beautiful mud cloth ottoman. So if you would like to make a uh, ottoman with this, a similar fabric, you can look on Rubia's either our website or our craft site on Etsy, and you can order 11 different types of fabric, uh, in, including this one. So I hope you will buy authentic um, mud cloth. There's a lot out there, but this, you know, is made in a village and you know that the proceeds of your purchase are going to support women and their families in the village of Jenne in Mali.